Hi, my name is BC. I'm a software engineer at Roblox. I work on a safety team. And so um, I'm, I'm here to talk about how we use ClickHouse. Roblox is an online platform that reimagines how people come together. Um, we enable sharing of experiences um, for billions of users. Um, it's, uh, everybody can create um, mostly games, but also educational experiences. Um, we have church religious experiences on Roblox, and all the content on Roblox are user generated. And, and you see why safety is extremely important. Um, I've been here for four years almost, and Clickhouse is our main real time OLAP tool. So I, I'll talk about Clickhouse usage a little bit, but mainly I want to deep dive into uh, a very specific counting problem that I cannot think about, think of any other better tool to solve. OKR metrics at, at safety is mainly prevalence and exposure. Now, exposure is measured by bad things. So prevalence is the number of bad things on the platform. Exposures are the time and number of people that are exposed to this bad thing. And so you see, real-time detection is extremely important. Um, taking the stuff down an hour later means that exposure increased by an hour. So our, we have very typical OLAP use cases. Um, we have 100 million or so safety related events per day. Not small, but definitely not big either, particularly given the building that we're in. Um, we have a lot of debugging use cases. So um, safety team is very ML centric. We automate more than 90% of our decisions um, at a quality that is better than human. And, and so we log these ML decisions. We log who did it, what the thing is, what is the ML model's uh, verdict on it. And a lot of times we have more than one single model, right? We run through, say, a similarity model, a deep learning model, and then if it's still unsure, we run it through an um, large multi-model. Um, and so we want to be able to compare, okay, something went wrong. We made a wrong decision here. Um, what, what are the steps? Or we want to, we actually build a bunch of investigation debugging tools for our PMs to, to click through and look at, okay, what are the recent rejection decisions of a very low prevalence category? So high prevalence categories are, say, profanities, right? All, all kids want to show, like, show off the latest bad words that they learn. Um, low prevalence are, say, asking other people for PII. Right, they're taking other people to off platform to like, hey, what's your snap and so on. So really important to be able to slice into the things that we care a lot about. And so just um, another one was um, we roll out a new model. How do we know that model is doing well in real time? Um, our typical strategy is to take a small sample of the model decisions, and we call it a control group, regardless of whether we, that the model would make a decision on it or not, would send it to a human, and then we'll just join those two together and, and check. But the deep dive I want to talk about is operational metrics. This is almost an interview question. You can take it for the next interview uh, that, that, that you conduct. So we have a platform that uh, runs all of our, I guess, core safety workflows. Events are coming in, um, moderation requests, somebody created an asset, an image, an ad, a game, whatever, and or we learn about new user activities that makes us want to reevaluate certain things given the new understanding of um, user suspiciousness on, or whatnot. So these things go into the safety platform. And uh, the, the important part is that the ticket queues over here goes into actual review. And this started off as mostly human. And then as we automate a lot, like uh, ML, uh, actually have ML workers doing a lot of reviews, um, and then invoke custom business logic depending on what the feature teams want to do. So this platform is just open to all feature development teams on Roblox um, because safety doesn't want to be the bottleneck. 
that 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 stops it and say, hey, as you are building a new thing, you want to like coordinate with us to integrate. Ads team can just say, I want to plug in here. I have new moderation requests because new ads got created, a new, complete new type of ad products created from inside experience, whatever. And then they can just define a new queue themselves without talking to a safety team. And then they can have their own PM start it and just test run while they're doing AB rollout and, and whatnot. So this ops platform runs through the several million events, tickets per day. And the ticket queue is what I want to zoom in next. So ops runs on metrics. Imagine that you are a, mod, a moderator lead. Like think of yourself as a supervisor. You have um, a, a bunch of moderators working for you and you want to look at how they're doing, um, whether particular queues are overrunning and you want to like rebalance and reassign people. We have SOOs on certain queues and, and because creators are depending on our approval decisions to um, continue with, with, with what they're doing. And as we're zooming in, this is the end product, right? So how do we build this? In particular, how do we build the chart for open ticket count? So this is just a counting problem, it seems. Our data store is some distributed tier, so cockroach, um, for the ticket data. And the data model is extremely reasonable. Ticket ID, QID, and the status status, like like it's the created, leased, um, closed, or whatnot. And common operations, and sometimes people want to move the ticket to a different queue if they're not the right um, queue assigned to it. Um, say it's a different locale or whatever, right? How do we count? How do we count in a distributed key value store? So the naive way is not gonna work. Not, not at our scale. You, you can't just do a count, blah, millions of tickets a day. And also while supervisors are there like with the dashboard open, refreshing all day long. And we also have automated alerts set up on the, the count metrics and, and, and you, you just can't run this at, at that scale. Um, not even ClickHouse. So, the simple thing is, uh, well, but we don't have that data in ClickHouse in the first place. Like we, we, we're using the K KV store, right? So the obvious solution is to change data capture it from our production KV store to ClickHouse and count there. Okay, apparently like, that should work. Because we're getting an event, a, a CDC of event stream, we don't have the materialized view of the ticket status. So we're seeing ticket creation event, ticket close events, ticket move events, and so on. But this formula should work. Except, well, how do we make this query performant? This is still scanning a lot. And more importantly, how do we avoid drift, right? The CDC is not a guaranteed thing. And when we look at like all the tickets accumulated, like how, how do we make sure that there is no permanent drift in the metric? So this is what we do. Um, for efficient queries, we run this um, in, in a ClickHouse query as our checkpoint query. And we only run this query every n minutes. It creates the checkpoints into the checkpoint table, all these uh, tables in ClickHouse. And then when the supervisor or the alerting system wants to get the latest count, we just need to compute the delta since the last checkpoint here, which is a lot more doable because of the, the row we need to scan through. And then we have this metric service that would, let's say, minutely compute the ticket count proactively and then ship it to your Prometheus or whatever telemetry system. What we do not want is permanent drift. So some queues, like they've been created like years ago, and um, if we have a drift problem, then what, well, for example, if we drop the close ticket event, then that math, like open minus close, we never see the close event and it would be left open forever. No good. Hey, but the nice thing is that all our tickets have the TTL. Right? So we would never have a ticket 
stuck in the queue for two weeks. Like our system would just automatically close the ticket. So what we need to do is to make sure that the checkpoint query's time range is larger than the TTL, which means that we might see some closed events that do not have the corresponding open events, right? Because we are just taking the last, say, two weeks or whatnot. So we modify the formula a little bit and just say, okay, these closed events um, do not come with the corresponding creation event, so we, we just undercount it, and so we add them back. Um, and so this checkpoint query runs pretty efficiently because um, we also don't run it that often, um, every 15 minutes or so. So that works. Now, few checkpoints is the, the, the part that, that I'm quite excited about. Um, s overall, like at Roblox, um, OLAP is not a commonly used thing. Um, I really don't understand why. Um, I used to work at Facebook at Data Infra. Um, the team that I was on also um, it was also responsible for Scuba. So Scuba is Facebook's OLAP system. It, like it's it's one of if you talk to an ex Facebook or ex Meta um, engineer, ask them to name the top three things that they miss. Scuba is probably the, um, uh, among them. So. And in the system that I really want to build out of this is self-service onboarding. Right? So imagine, so Roblox has an uh, event stream, right? The, the event stream that uh, think, think of it as, uh, as your Kinesis stream that, that would send things into a data warehouse. What I want to do is to say, you can just check a checkbox and then your event stream would also, sorry, uh, instead of, in addition to writing to the data warehouse, also write to the click house. Um, and this is where the, this ac ac uh, architecture of click house cloud really helps. Um, we used to run it on-prem, and then we move over to click house cloud. Um, thanks a lot for the team for being very patient with us, like going through our migration process. Um, so this deals with scales and and and, and, it's, and, and we don't have to worry about like, the, the hardware aspect of it. Our event stream is schematized, it's pulled above schematized, and this is kind of where some, some, the part that I'm trying to figure out. Um, ClickHouse, at least the on-prem version, isn't great at pulled above schema refresh. Uh, you have to restart the, the node right, to pick up the new schema. So what we are currently doing is to just convert a proto into one single field. It's like a, a big JSON blob. And then in the materialized view, um, reconstruct what the table is supposed to look like with all the proper columns. So I don't actually know of um, a good way to solve it. If you should do, let me know. Um, uh, yeah, but we're, I'm very excited about this uh, infra, and, and ClickHouse has helped safety a lot for real-time detection monitoring. 